But at the end of the day, you didn't get the score that was truly in you because... Welcome to Ask Dr. Gray Pre-Med Q&A. Thanks for joining me. How are you? Hi. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm interested to hear what your question is and how I can help you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of background into my situation. Um, I recently, or not so recently, last year I graduated from San Francisco State. And I have my degree in biology with concentration in physiology, and I have a minor in Spanish. And um, I have a good amount of clinical experience. I worked at a fertility clinic doing clinical coordinating and um, medical assisting for over a year, and that was like an amazing experience. And then I, um, beginning of COVID, stopped working there and started prepping for my MCAT. Okay. And so I prepped for my MCAT for six months, and I took it in September. Okay. So I started right around March and took it in September. Um, the materials that I used was Next Step Test Prep, and so I had their online course, which was great. Now called and Blueprint. Now called Blueprint, <laughs> yes. Um, um, and then I had a tutor through them as well, and he was just amazing. Good. I also used um, AMC, Anki, Jack Weston, um, UWorld, which was great too. Also, and your podcast, MCAT Podcast. Nice. Specifically for the Psych and Soch was really helpful. Good. Using Phil's uh, Psych Soch method there. Yeah, right. Nice. And all of his little anecdotes. <laughs> so you you really went full steam ahead with MCAT prep using yes. kind of everything and anything. Yes. It was okay. like the first time in many years that I wasn't working. And so I yeah. just. I'm waiting for the but. That. Huh? I'm waiting for the but. For the but, right? Yeah. Um, and so my full length score average was kind of around 510, 513 pretty consistently. Right. So I was, um, yeah, I was happy with that. Uh, I was tutoring weekly with my tutor, which was really helpful as well. I also began a meditation practice during my MCAT prep, which was extremely helpful because I do, I'm one of those people that gets test anxiety. And so I was really yeah. trying to conquer that. And um, I'm trying to see like what else before I get into what happened. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So I think that's all the preliminary. Okay. And so when I took the real deal in September, I didn't take it in my city. I did take it in Sacramento and I'm in San Francisco. Okay. And um, so that was a bit of a change, which is fine. When I went there, I felt super calm. I didn't have the typical arousal you'd feel, which was strange because I thought that I'd feel like a little arousal, but I didn't feel any at all. Yep. Um, and I got through every section with a little bit of time to spare. It's nice. very typical for me to get through physics and chem and cars with like five minutes, but biology and psychology with like 30 minutes. Interesting. And so that's exactly okay. what happened. Okay. <laughs> but um, So you my... walked out thinking that was pretty pretty on par for where I'm at. Yeah, it felt really normal. It felt like a full length, you know. Okay. I was chill, didn't have any big surprises. Yeah. Um, there was a few questions <laughs> until your score came back. Until my score came back, yes. Yeah. Um, so when I got my score a few weeks ago, or like two weeks ago, I was flabbergasted, straight shocked. I got below a 500, which has never happened to me on any full length. I think yeah. maybe my diagnostic was below 500, but other than that, nothing. And so that was definitely a little bit of a blow, yeah. which... I'm not discouraged. I understand that it happens to some students. Yeah. What I'm really just trying to figure out now is how can I move forward and not let that pattern happen again? Yeah. What can I change? You know, is there a different approach? Yeah. It's it's a hard one, right? Is is what what changed from those full lengths to the real deal? Yeah. When you were doing your full lengths, how were you doing them in terms of timing, in terms of uh, timing, in, ter in, in terms of like duration, how long would it take you mm -hmm. to take the exam in terms of what time of the day were you taking the, te the, the full length of exams versus the real test? What, what did all of that look like? Yeah, totally. Um, so I took all of them at the typical like MCAT time. I didn't take any faster or any slower. You know, you can um, mm -hmm. adjust the times. I took them all with the standard timing. Okay. I took them typically around the time that I would have taken my MCAT. And so I was scheduled at noon. Okay. And so I took most of them between like 11 and noon to start. Um, I rarely ran out of time. And if I did, it was typically in chem phys. And I think that only happened in the first two full lengths, maybe. Okay. Um, here in my apartment, I live alone, so no big distractions. Okay. Yeah. When you were taking the 
full length exams, getting those high scores, were those the first times that you were taking the exam or is this a retake and you've no, seen that, that material before? No, okay. it was my first time. As that's a very common mistake that students make is they'll, they'll be a retake, a student needing to retake, and they'll take the full length exams again, tests yeah. that they've already done. And they're like, oh, look at my score. I'm, I'm getting a 510. <laughs> When in reality, it's probably closer to a 505 because some of those yeah. questions are familiar to them. Yeah. Um, so first time through the exam, scoring well. Um, test day, you said, wasn't uh, wasn't anything outside of the ordinary. Nothing remarkable. Yeah, you didn't didn't uh, have anxiety. You talked about nothing nothing too bad. It was more zen than I had ever felt, which was the strangest. I was like, I'm going to get there and there's going to be some sort of, you know, <laughs> arousal, a little yeah. adrenaline to maybe give me another point. And no, not at all. Nothing. I sat there and I was totally zen. Yeah. Which is interesting. I, I wonder if, uh, and it's funny, a, a couple of weeks ago on uh, Ask Dr. Ray, I talked about this kind of, it, we were talking about imposter syndrome and, and the arousal that you were talking about, the, the kind of physiological effects of anxiety versus excitement and how that's really the same thing. It's just the, the story that we tell ourselves that's different. Um, I, I wonder if that was almost a detriment to you, that you didn't have any sort of excitement, that you kind of went into it kind of blasé and you're like, oh, I am just going to go through the day and didn't, didn't you didn't get that adrenaline to kickstart what you needed. Um, yeah. and, and obviously we could, we could, uh, armchair quarterback it to death and, and try to understand. But at the end of the day, you didn't get the score that was truly in you because you did set yourself up for success. You prepared the way that everyone says that you should prepare. Uh, you, you did the full length. How many full length exams did you end up taking before? I took, I want to say four four next step exams and then all of the AMC exams. So four AMC and then the sample. So roughly 10, okay. Okay. give or take maybe yeah. one or two. So y you prepared perfectly. Thank you. <laughs> now, now, obviously something happened on test yeah. day and whether that is COVID related anxiety that you just didn't expect and didn't feel because it was different or whatever it is, right? You're out in public maybe for the first time sitting in a location with other yeah. people wearing a mask. And that's another thing. Did you wear a mask when you, when you did your practice exams? Um, for the last two or three, I did not for Good. all of them, but like okay. in the few weeks leading up to my exam, I did start stu and I started just like regularly studying with a mask <laughs> on, not just the exams, yeah. which was terrible. Cause like I said, I'm not working, so I'm not used to wearing a mask unless I go yeah. to the grocery store. Yep. And so I was just like, so hot, <laughs> <laughs> like sweaty and itchy and like, ah, yeah, it's, it's not fun. Um, yeah, it happens. And, and I don't know if, if there's any good reason why it happens, um, other than, and a lot of people will go, their, their first response is, this is wrong, right? This is yeah. obviously not my score. This is not my exam. Something happened. That's what my mom said. Yeah. And, like, and, Can you email them? And I was like, the AMC does not, yeah, does the, not take that. The AMC does not play around. And, and obviously, bugs happen and mistakes happen in, in computer systems. Uh, the, the systems are only as good as the people programming them. But 99.9999999% of the time, you yeah. just had a bad day. Um, and so there, there really isn't anything to do other than keep your skills up for the next couple months and take the test as soon as possible. Yeah, Because that's, I, that score is inside of you. It just didn't come out when you needed it to. That's why when I saw it, I was like, I like looked at it a few times. And I was like, wait, 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 wait what? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, good. and it, I don't think it hurts to email the double AMC. I don't think it hurts if you haven't already to say, look, this is probably my score and I accept that. And is there any, uh, do you have any process in place to review to see if there are any uh, kind of inconsistencies or discrepancies with yeah. the reporting of my score? Because, and lay out all of the evidence to say, here are my full length exams, taking them normal time frame, taking them at home, uh, obviously <laughs> taking them during a normal kind of duration, here are my blueprint exams, here's everything I did, and here are my scores. And, and obviously they have your full length scores because you're, you're taking the AMC exams on their system. Yeah, They can see all of that and, and just say, like this is lower than my diagnostic or whatever it was compared to my diagnostic. 
And and while I I accept the fact that sometimes people have really bad days, I just want to see if there's anything you can do to look into this. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. I, I hadn't because I didn't know what that process looked like or if they even accepted those kinds of emails. Yeah. Um, I can do that for sure. I, I don't think it hurts. Obviously, they very much can just go, yeah, we don't have a process in place to look at that. Sorry, mm -hmm. your score is your score. Or they can say, oh, definitely, we'll 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 run this through our, our system, whatever okay. that looks like. Yeah, I can definitely do that. Um, and I'm just trying to see where I could have potentially, you know, gone wrong. I do know that, I, like, my my test prep timeline was pretty long. Yeah. And so I kind of went back and asked my tutor, like, do you think this or that? And he was like, you know, like, your test prep timeline was pretty long. Like, maybe you just need to go back and really brush that content up. Um, the other side note that I will say is, during all of my test prep, I never really improved in cars. Yep. I had a pretty much a baseline score where it was like 125 through 127 and it never came out of that range. Yep. And so I know that this time I definitely need to do some soul searching and figure <laughs> out what I'm going to be doing for cars. Yep. Um, I'll definitely be listening to your podcast because <laughs> I didn't listen to it before because I didn't know that it existed. See? But now I know. Yeah, um, there, you, there you go. There's the problem. You, you didn't <laughs> listen to enough of my podcast. I didn't hear you enough. Yeah, let me let me stop you real quick before you, you carry on about the duration thing because that's always a very common kind of go-to is, is you don't want to study too long because then then there's kind of this, this diminishing returns. Yeah. And you may start forgetting about content from earlier on. And so theoretically that could happen, right? That just the test that you got on test day could have had a lot of material from the very early part of your studying. Yeah. And all of your practice exams had stuff from the later part of your studying. Now, while that's possible, it's not probable, right? And, and so very likely, you just had a bad day and it had yeah. really nothing to do with the duration of your studying because your full length exams would have shown some sort of discrepancy as well in terms of mm -hmm. having a negative consequence to studying for so long. Okay. And they yeah. didn't show that. So that's probably yeah. not it. Okay. Um, let me see. I'm trying to think of, um, so in the hopes that I can, well, not in the hopes, like I will get that score up. Once I yep. get that score up, um, I guess my question is, does it hurt you? If say that I got <laughs> like a 506, yep. that jump, will that mean more to the AMC than just me like getting a good score in general? Like as long as I'm like increasing my score by some significant amount, even though like a 506 is not necessarily a score that I would have wanted in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely shows something because – if, when you look at the data that the, the AAMC puts out in terms of score improvement for different students is is the far majority of students don't do a ton better on the MCAT when they retake it. And so if you go from less than 500 to a 506, whatever that score jump is, seven plus points, that's huge. Now, it's still not the best score and nowhere yeah. near where you were scoring before. And so that still may hurt you, even though you showed a ton of improvement between those two scores. Okay. It just depends so really... on the school and how they're reviewing scores and whether they look at the change in scores, what, what that Delta is versus just what's your highest score or whatever, however they do it. Okay. Um, so really just trying to aim to get back where my full length score average was and yeah. even higher. Yeah. And, and obviously the, the answer is always shoot for as high as possible. Shoot as high. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, <laughs> and get there. And, and again, I think you need to approach it from the standpoint of you've done all of the right work. You've, you've done everything possible. Now you just need to maintain it so that you can, you can go out there and, and prove it next time. And, and I wouldn't come yeah. at it from a, um, I, I need to improve standpoint. Uh, I, obviously if you want to improve, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get to a point where from a, a mental standpoint, from a, from an energy standpoint, you're killing yourself trying to get to a 520, mm -hmm. uh, because you think that's what, it's going to take because in your mind, you're like, well, if I score 520 on my practice exams, then my real test is going to be a 510 based on the, my history. Right. Oh, that's a scary thought. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, I, I, w- I wouldn't go there. And since um, me retaking the MCAT doesn't really interfere with my application timeline because I'll be applying in the 2021 cycle, yep. um, the only thing that we're really working towards is just improving that score. And otherwise, like it, um, applications won't look a certain way because of that? Nope. Okay. Um, uh, is this something that you see? Do you see this ever happen or am I an outlier? <laughs> it happens. It's not common to, to really drop drastically like that, but it happens. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but it happens. It, usually it's it's one section. It's always the car section, historically, where students come in and be like, that was the worst car score I've ever had, period. Um, and I felt better. I was like, there was at least like three passages that had direct links to like myself or people that I knew. And so yeah. I was like, oh, like, this is interesting. Yeah. Um, and and that potentially could hurt, right? When you when you go and listen to yeah. the, car, the MCAT Cars podcast, we talk about that a lot, Jack. Uh, and myself in, in terms of sometimes you bring too much outside knowledge into the passage and the questions and answers that it, it, it distracts you from really answering what the AAMC wants and you're bringing in your outside knowledge. And, and that could be the case too, where everything was too relevant to you yeah. and, and you, you messed up in that way. Yeah, um, I definitely I used Jack Weston during my prep, and and that was an amazing platform. I really love the way how those questions, the way that they're formatted, they really yeah. mirror the type of questions that are asked on the AMC. Good, and that's the thing that I felt good about during cars. I was able to start recognizing question patterns, but I yep. found myself getting stuck in the nitty gritty and having a harder time capturing like big opinions. Yeah, you you felt that on the real test versus full length or in general. Yeah, all all all, Interesting. all of my prep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I know that I need to do a good amount of review with cars. I feel really confident in the psych soci- psych social section because mm-hmm. it's so interesting. It's so easy to study. I feel like I'm just studying stuff that I care about. Like, I, well, yeah. I obviously you care about all of it. Um, <laughs> but I feel good about that section. For me, it's really chem phys that's always been the the downer. Okay. Well, yeah. again, based on your practice scores, based on everything that you've done, the score's there. It just, it mm-hmm. didn't come out. It was hiding. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was hiding. It'll come out. Uh, and then I have a little sidebar question. It's not yep. necessarily about my MCAT prep. Um, considering COVID and me taking all this time off for MCAT studying, and I didn't anticipate taking off another three months for MCAT studying, um, is this block of me not really working going to hinder my application or look strange? I know that it's kind of weird because it's COVID and everybody's having their applications look a little bit different these days. Yeah. But I was just curious about the way that that would look. Yeah, I think everyone's application is going to look weird for a few years. Everyone who's <laughs> gone through this process, uh, whether they got fired because the the restaurant they worked at closed down or wherever yeah. they worked at closed down or the, their volunteer opportunities closed because of COVID, whatever, it is it is what it is. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, but I would potentially think about do you really need three more months of full-time MCAT prep or will it actually help you to, to go out there and start doing some other things? And will that be refreshing for you? That's exactly what um, everyone around me is saying. Cause I was like doing MCAT studying seven days a week, at yeah. least in the last three months, you know, seven hours a day. Yeah. And they were saying like, you need to treat this more like a job, just nine to five Monday through Friday. And that's yeah. it. And so I think this time around that is what I'm going to do so I can avoid the burnout because I will have been studying for eight, nine months at this yep. point. Um, I have been able to do a little bit of remote volunteering, which is really great with Good. some um, elder folks that are having a harder time with COVID due to isolation. So that's been really yeah. refreshing, um, which I have enjoyed that. But Good. I do have one more question is, so my clinical experience, I was um, doing clinical coordination and uh, medical assisting at a fertility clinic and I loved it. And I was there for over a year mm. and I really enjoy that kind of, patient doctor liaison position. I really felt great in that position and like I could handle it well and I was learning a lot. And I was curious, would it um, look redundant on my application if I apply for a job that has that same kind of position but in a different sector of medicine? No. No? Yeah, fo- follow what you're passionate about and don't worry about what it would look okay. like. Yeah, if you okay, enjoy cool. that, go for it. Yeah, I really do. I think it's it's interesting to kind of be able to be the bridge between what's going on with patients and what's, you know, the, how the doctors are experiencing yeah. that. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, cool. I think that wraps up most of my questions. Oh, good. <laughs> well, good luck to you. And, and again, great job with, with all of the prep for your MCAT. And hopefully next time it, it actually shows in the result. Thank you. I appreciate it.